Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in DxO Photo Lab 4 and I'm playing around with local adjustments. They're really powerful. They give you the ability to customize specific targeted areas of your photo and apply, frankly, a whole lot of different effects to those targeted areas. So here's Photo Lab. I'm playing around with this photo and to be clear, I've done nothing to the photo. Um, I actually recommend that you start in you know, you can set up your workspace over here. This is the advanced workspace. I usually start here and I would go through some light and color and detail, maybe do some things and then go into local adjustments and make the adjustments that I want to make. But in this video, I'm not going to pre-edit anything over here. I'm not going to use any of these settings. I'm just going to use local adjustments. So you can click on this menu here and turn it on. And this is basically where you can get to local adjustments. Now, when you're ready to go, click that button at the top that says local adjustments. You'll have the option here to use a few different tools. And that was one of the things when I first got started with it, I couldn't figure out how to select the tools. And then I realized, oh, you just need to right click. So if you right click, you will see a menu comes up and you have a few different options. I'll go around these and talk about them. To be clear, this video is not a deep dive. I'm not going to go into every one of these in detail. I'm going to use a few different masks to show you how you can customize your image using the different local adjustment masks, but again, not a deep dive. So you have auto mask, which is basically edge detection. It allows you to go mask an area in, and then it should detect the edges based on color and contrast, things like that, light, of course. So that's one option. You have a control point option, which is basically a radial mask. It creates a circular mask. And then with any of these, you can duplicate them and then move them around and go back and re-edit. It's actually re really flexible. The control points are things that used to be included, actually still are included, in the Nick collection, also owned by DxO. And my understanding is they included these in Photolab after they acquired the Nick's, uh, Nick collection, not Nick's collection, not mine, um, the Nick collection from Google a number of years ago. Anyway, control points, super powerful. I'll show you those. You've got a graduated filter and you've got a brush. Here you've got a reset and you've got new mask and then you've got erase. So if you go in and do something and, and decide, oh, that kind of stinks, I want to get rid of it, you can just erase it. So with this one, I'm going to go ahead and start with a graduated filter. So I'm just going to click on that. And my graduated filter is ready to be applied. And the first thing I want to do is brighten up this foreground. So I'll just click here and kind of drag. You have the ability, as you can see, to make this as, as wide or uh, you know as, as uh, kind of collapsed as you want it to be. Here I'm going to do a gradient of about like that. You can always grab this lower button to pull that back down and maybe uh, then grab this. This one, you, uh, this top button allows you to tilt it um, and increase or decrease kind of the feathering, the gradient area. And then as soon as you let go and get that in place, you'll see you've got some controls here. You've got basically three different menus, the top one, which is light, the middle, middle one, which is color, and the bottom one, which is detail. So for this one, and by the way, once that mask was applied, you can see that the mask is over here listed as graduated filter. So if you wanted to, you can click on that and you can type foreground. If you could spell it, that is, uh, that would be me, uh, foreground and hit enter. Um, that allows you to keep your mask kind of separate so you know what you're working on. But uh, I just double clicked it, renamed it. So I'm working on the foreground. And as I hover over these, you'll see the different options available. So the first one's exposure. So yeah, I definitely want to do that. And as you start moving it, you can see the mask uh, that was visible in blue is hiding. And you're now able to kind of see how this is impacting the photo. So if I went really high, that would be terrible. But I'm going to pull that back a little bit. And I'm actually going to uh, do a little bit less feathering here, a little bit smaller gradient zone, and I'm going to move this up a little bit. So I think I'm going to go something about like that. That's exposure. Second one is contrast. Maybe I'll give it a tiny bit of contrast, and now maybe a little bit more bump and exposure. Third one is micro con contrast. This is great at like adding a little bit of kick, a little bit of detail. So I'm going to do that and pull up a little bit of that in the sand, like if I go like that, you can kind of see what's happening in the sand. So I don't want to go very high. In fact, I only want to go a little bit because I like it in the sand, but I don't like it in the water. So we're going to fix that here after a while. Clear view, which is kind of like they're dehazing. You have highlights and midtones and shadows and then black. So I'm done with that section. I'm going to click on color. Over here, you have vibrancy. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a bump in vibrancy. Next, you have saturation. I like that. Next up is your temperature. You can kind of see where it's defaulting. This is a raw file, as you can see on that left menu. With all the metadata, it says raw. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and close that so we can see the photo better. 
I'm gonna take the temperature down just a tiny bit, and then you've got tint. I'm gonna increase the tint to give it a tiny bit of magenta, and then you've got a hue. Hue gives you the ability to do lots of different things. As you can see, I'm not gonna do any of that, so I'm just gonna double click, and that will reset it. And of course, this uh, kind of semicircular icon here on the right-hand side is a reset for that entire filter stack. And this last one is detail, and this would be sharpness and blur. I don't really need any of those there. I like what I've got. So you can always come back to this little icon here and click that and that'll hide the menu. And then as you move your mouse, you can see that that has hidden the mask as well. Okay, over here on the right is my mask. If I turn that off, you can see that's what it was like before. And when I turn it back on, you can see that's what it's like now. So it's a little bit brighter, a little bit of a color shift based on the things I did and that sort of thing. And like I said, if I wanted to come back in, I can just hover here and I can readjust the mask and get back into these controls and edit them further if I want to. I don't. What I do want to do is get a brush mask and I'm going to go brush in a little bit in that water down there. So I'm going to right click again and I'm going to get the brush. And you see the brush settings show up in this bottom left corner. So I'm going to take the brush size down and I think the feathering and the flow and the opacity are fine. So all I'm gonna do is get my mouse and I'm just gonna paint into the water here a little bit. Uh, and what I wanna do is kinda smooth that out. And I'm just kinda going rough. This is not gonna be a very precision job, but I've masked that in a little bit. And what I wanna do is come over here to micro contrast and I wanna drag that down to the left because that's basically removing some of the detail. And you can see that that's softening up that water a little bit. And I think that looks a little bit better. You can hover, see where your mask is. You can click that to hide that. And there you go. So now I've done all the work I want to do in the bottom. Now what I want to do is get another gradient mask and work on the sky. So I'm going to once again right click. And here's when I'm going to get a graduated filter. I call it a gradient mask. Same kind of thing. But same thing as what I did in the beginning and the bottom. Except I'm going to do it for the top this time. So something about like that. And what I want to do is give it a little bit of bump and exposure. And I'm going to come over here to color. And I'm going to give it some vibrancy and saturation because, you know, it's a sunset. Why not? Pull the temperature down slightly. Give it a little bit of tint. Same kind of thing I did on that last one. There you go. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go back to this first tab and I'm going to reduce micro contrast just to soften that up, just like I did on the water. But this time it's applying across that entire sky. Now, once again, I've got filters over here. So I'm going to rename brush. And I'm going to call that puddles. And then this top graduated filter, I'm going to rename Sky. So again, this is helping me keep track of what I'm doing. So again, if I wanted to, I can hover over these. You can see where these different masks are applying. As I hover, you can see the differences there. And of course, that gives you the ability to come in and further adjust if you want to. Also down here, you've got some controls. You can turn off a mask. You can duplicate a mask. So if I wanted to create a second mask of the same thing and then move it around, I could do that. I can invert it here or I could just trash it if I wanted to. Keep in mind, you need to be highlighting the one that you want to take that action on. So if I wanted to duplicate puddles, I would need to click on that first and then click duplicate. I'm not going to do that, but I wanted to point that out. Same with delete, invert. Just make sure you click and highlight the mask that you want to take that action on. Okay, so so far my photo is looking pretty good, but I'm going to get another mask. I'm going to right click, and this time I'm going to get a control point. So I'm going to click on that, and it gives me a control point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go drop that over here on this right-hand side. And this is basically a circle. As I said, it gives you the ability to come in and create a radial mask or a circular mask, whatever you want to call it, in your photo. And all I want to do here is I want to just make that a little bit more contrasty, a little bit darker. So I'm going to come in here and just drop the exposure a little bit simply because I want a little bit more darkness there on that left side. It's already a silhouette, the, uh, the hill itself but I'm, I'm focused more so in this bottom section here. And you can see I can make the mask and then I can move it around and the adjustments that I made will follow that mask around. So it's pretty flexible in that regard. I'm gonna go ahead and take it down a little bit darker. And that's really all I wanted to do there was just darken that up because I don't really care about your eye wandering over there. It's in shadow. The hill itself is in silhouette. There's no really reason to make it brighter. There's definitely no reason to add any detail or color because it's already dark, you can't see it. So I'm just making it darker and I wanna do that. So I've got a control point. I might name this, you know, dark left. I don't know, um, just because it's a left side and I made it dark. Also note that as you look at these, you can tell what kind of mask it is based on the icon that's next to it. So that's a, a gradient mask. 
This is a brush mask, another gradient, and of course, a control point based on the shape of that icon there next to the mask. Also, when you right click, there is a question mark in the center of this masking menu. If you click on that and you look down here in the bottom right hand side, you can see that there are other masking controls and kind of hotkey type things that you can do there. That's basically, it's the help menu for lack of a better word. So that's kind of handy to have. But I'm really done editing this photo with these masks. So when you're finished, you can just click close and you're kind of finished and you've turned off the local mask for lack of a better word. So now as you hover, all the little masking icons uh, are not showing up. And over here, um, as you click on them, they're not showing up either. So these are basically, for lack of a better word, I think of them as kind of locked because I've turned off the adjustability of the tool. So now if you want to do a comparison, of course, you can do a compare up here with that button, hold down the before and after, but you can also just turn off local adjustments. So there it is with all the local adjustments on, and there it is with them off. And if you ever want to get in and adjust any of these, just click this little button here where it says tool, click on that, and that reactivates these. And then as you go through, you can click on them, come over here and make further adjustments if you would like to. I'm going to turn that off because I don't. And then you've also got opacity. And this is an opacity adjustment for the mask or the local adjustment tool that you have highlighted. So that dark left, if I take this opacity down, you can see it gets brighter over there and then go back up, it gets darker. Same with the sky. If I take click on that and then take the opacity down, all the edits to the sky are disappearing as I go to zero. And then as I go back to 100, they show up. Same thing with the foreground, for example. If I go all the way to the left, it goes dark on me again. If I go back to the right, there it is. So that opacity slider is operating independently on each of these adjustment tool instances that you've clicked on. Okay, friends, that is a getting started with the local adjustment tool in DxO Photo Lab 4. Hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas of how to use this tool. It definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. It did for me, simply because you kind of learn the nuances of a tool as you start to play with it. And every product, and I use a lot of products, as you may know from my different videos, but each product seems to do masking and, and local adjustments slightly differently. So it just takes a little um, practice, for lack of a better word, to get kind of fluid with it. But I love that you can just right click, get into those masks, and then you have all those controls like saturation, exposure, you know, vibrance, micro contrast, all those different things right there, literally at your fingertips. Super powerful, super flexible, super easy. And again, from a workflow point of view, I don't recommend necessarily just using local adjustments. I did on this one and it kind of works fine. You certainly can do that, but I think my general workflow would be to start with the primary tools, working with light, detail, and color, however you may need to adjust the image first and then come and do local adjustments as kind of a touch-up mechanism. But that's how it works. Hope it gives you some ideas. Hope it gives you some tips that you can use in your own editing. Thanks for watching, my friends. Have fun out there editing. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and adios.